MacBook Air M2 came out a few months ago and in this video I'll compare it to the M1 MacBook Air as well as other Windows laptops that you can get right now. So I'll start off by talking about the screen and the notch. So, so it's honestly not really noticeable uh, and a lot of apps do a good job of hiding the notch by like blacking out the top area and making this kind of like unusable. So there isn't really that big of a difference in the screen size compared to the M1 Air. Although it does say 0.4 inches bigger on paper, it's just a slight bit of like black screen pretty much. And now I'll get into the performance. So according to sources online, this is about 10 to 15% faster than the M1 Air, which to some people, maybe it might be significant, but like overall, you're not really going to notice any difference. And especially with the target audience for this being like, uh, like students and people that are not pushing this that hard, um, you're probably not going to notice a performance difference between the two laptops. Um, in terms of comparing this to Windows computers, it's like usually quite a bit better in terms of CPU compared to Windows computers. Although if you're getting a laptop with like a 3060 or 3070, those are probably going to outperform this. And now, um, so this computer doesn't have any fans, uh, like there's no ventilation. So when you use this for a while, like video editing, if you push it hard for more than like five minutes, it begins to heat up. And if you have this sitting on your lap, you can definitely feel the heat um, coming off of it. And the keyboard does heat up as well. So that's something to keep in mind because the MacBook Pros have um, fans. And so if you're willing to go uh, down that route and get a MacBook Pro, you're not going to run into any of these issues. So yeah. And another thing to keep in mind is that, so according to dave 2 dds video, the back gets up to 40 degrees Celsius hot. Most people that are getting this computer is are probably not pushing it to it, its limit for that long. Um, although if you are doing video editing, maybe consider a MacBook Pro, although this thing does handle video editing fine as well. I've been using Final Cut for a few weeks and it's it works really well. There's like no performance issues with that. And so the battery life, this thing has like the best battery life that I've ever used on any laptop. It's better than the M1 Air for sure. And I've consistently been getting around 14 hours of screen on usage, which is actually insane. Like I used a Dell XPS before this and it's like night and day between the two. Like I can use this thing for like three or four days at school without having to charge it. So it's actually really good. Um, in terms of storage, um, the 256 model only has, uh, well, it's only 256, but also the, the speed of the storage is a lot slower. So if you're getting this computer, either go for the 512 storage or something more. On, on this model, I have the 512 storage. And in terms of RAM, probably go for 16. Um, 24 is probably not worth it, but eight, it, you'll run into problems. I had eight on my M1 Air like um, before using this computer and it often had the message that pops up that says like your system has run out of memory and like there's a few problems with that. And in terms of build quality, so I had a problem with the previous MacBook Air where like the edges here would get chipped when I have like something that like hits it. So when I have the computer in my backpack and I put my bottle in, sometimes it would hit the corner and chip it. And I've been using like, I've been using this for school for like two months and I, I haven't chipped it at all yet, which is surprising. And I think on this model, the, the corners are a bit rounder compared to the M1 Air. Like the M1 Air has super sharp corners. And another change in design is that this, the M2 Air hat is like a flat bottom, whereas the M1 Air had like, it had a wedge shape, if you remember that. So this has a larger trackpad than the M1 Air, if that matters to you. They're both amazing trackpads. And also the function row is full size now instead of the half sized keys like on the M1 Air. So this thing doesn't have any fingerprints, but I've heard that if you get the midnight color, it does chip easier and it also gets fingerprints easier. So I just went with this nice space gray color. As you can see, 
it's the exact same color as my, my previous computer. So, yeah. And uh, in terms of overall thoughts with this computer, so most people are most people are probably going to get this for school related stuff, like a bit of coding here and there, and like Google Docs and that kind of stuff. And for those kinds of people, then definitely go for this. Don't go for anything more expensive. Like don't get a MacBook Pro or anything, but I will um, say to consider the M1 Air because you are saving quite a bit of money and like uh, both experiences are pretty similar. Like there isn't that big of a difference. The only main thing I would say is probably um, like the screen, but like that's not, that's the main thing I noticed switching from the M1 Air to this one. Uh, and it's not even that big of a difference. Um, with the other change being the, the function keys, but like, again, it's not really that big of a difference. Also the charging port, uh, it's got MagSafe again, like before they've added that back. So if that matters to you again, you might want to go with this one, but yeah. And in terms of comparing this to Windows computers, I would definitely recommend going with MacBooks. They're just like really outperforming all of Windows computers right now with their battery life performance and like build quality and like they're much better unless you have applications obviously that can only run on windows then maybe you might want, want to go with the dell xps or something like that so yeah that's pretty much it thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video